this rather grainy uh, picture is me on my bicycle when I was 10 years old. Shortly after this picture was taken, I fell off this bicycle. I was racing home for a very important tennis match. I don't actually recall how it happened, but I recall waking up on the side of the road with my left elbow bending in exactly the opposite of the way that it normally should. I know, horrible stuff. A good Samaritan took me to what was then one of the best hospitals in 1990s Harare in Zimbabwe. I do recall, though, the look on my mom's face when she saw me. She was absolutely terrified, way more terrified than I was. But she needn't have been so worried, because ultimately I got what was considered some of the best treatment available during those times. Now, this involved a series of operations over the course of a year, and now I have about 90% of the functionality of my left limb. The interesting thing is that all of the planning for the surgeries was done using X-ray imaging. And so today I can't help but think if the outcome would have been even better if the surgeon had better tools in which to do the planning. And better tools have been available for a long time, but I keep hopping on about what these better tools are. Let me be a bit more explicit. This is a digital X-ray of the thigh bone. These are CT views of the exact same thigh bone. Both CT and X-ray are miracles of modern medicine, allowing the clinician to have a window inside the human body without having to cut the patient out first. But there are some distinct advantages to CT when you compare it to X-ray. CT generally presents with much more detail than X-ray, which means this can be quite useful for diagnosis. You, the clinician can also look at the CT from multiple angles, which can be also be quite useful. Also, with CT, the clinician can develop a three-dimensional representation of the patient's bone, which is obviously much, much more useful for radiological planning and for prosthesis design than X-ray. This is what I mean by better. I mean giving the clinician the best tools possible in order to make the best decisions that they can make. But there is a cost to CT. CT generally leads to more ionizing radiation to the patient, which can be a little bit pro problematic later on you know, in terms of risk of developing cancer. And this concern is even more acute when you consider trying to image young children. But more importantly, CT is substantially more expensive than X-ray. And so while CT technology was available when I needed it, access for me was prevented because high-end radiological services such as CT and MRI are expensive, labor-intensive, and require extensive and substantial expertise to operate. And with competing healthcare expenditure, under-resourced countries such as South Africa can scarcely be able to reach parity with their well-endowed um, counterparts with regards to investment in medical imaging, regardless of known advantages and also regardless of increasing demand. And so this has taken me a little bit on a journey. And I've done a little bit of research around this. Most countries in Africa report one CT unit per one million inhabitants. We can compare this to Denmark's 24 CT units per one million inhabitants. Indeed, globally, there is what is termed the radiological divide. This is where well-resourced countries have well-trained staff and state-of-the-art equipment, whereas on the other side of the spectrum, under-resourced countries can scarcely be able to provide the most basic imaging for their citizens. And of course, this radiological divide is reflected in a country like South Africa. This could partly be because of policies of the past. These policies of the past venerated our so-called differences. And this 
ended up with society being structured in ways that uh, were arbitrary with regards to gender, race, and age-related hierarchies, often leading to some people not having access then and also now. But I don't want to talk to you about those kind of differences. Today I want to talk to you about real biological differences and how we can use those differences to bridge the radiological divide. But before I can do that, I need to make a small detour and talk to you about what your body can tell me about mine. Well, we're all made of the same stuff. But between this stuff, there always exist some small differences. Taking the example of our thigh bone, there exist some differences with regards to the shape and the mineral content of the bone. Now, the interesting thing is we can actually encapsulate these differences in what are called statistical models. And these statistical models are quite impressive because they express both the degree of differences across person to person, but also, if you think about it, it's the degree of sameness. Right? But more importantly, with enough examples in our statistical model, we can have a powerful tool, and we can help to answer the question that I asked before, which is, what can your body tell me about mine? And the answer to that is, with enough examples of objects with biologically relevant but small differences encoded in our statistical model, we can make some powerful predictions. For example, if this was my thigh bone and it was missing a part, we'd be able to use our statistical model to be able to figure out or predict what the rest of my bone should look like. And I find that very interesting. But we at the University of Cape Town, together with collaborators at the University of Basel in Switzerland and EMT Atlantic in France, are taking this notion even further, such that given a patient's x-ray, we can make a prediction about what their CT should look like. And I think that is even more interesting. But where is the opportunity here? Well, the World Health Organization says up to 90% of all medical imaging needs in under-resourced countries can be met by the provision of a single X-ray and an ultrasound machine. Furthermore, it is common knowledge that X-ray is the most equitably distributed and available medical imaging resource globally. So with this information, we can really start to unpack where the opportunity is. We can start to envision being able to provide CT-like images from X-ray. <coughs> Furthermore, we can start to think a little bit about what impact that would have for an under-resourced country. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could reduce the time demand, radiation exposure, but more importantly, the cost associated with traditional CT. And for those hospitals and clinics in remote and rural areas that have a digital X-ray, wouldn't it be great for them to be able to have the best tools without even introducing any further capital investment by just leveraging the X-rays that they have but still getting the CT? I think that would be great. In fact, as Steve Jobs said, I think this would be insanely great. And it's possible. We in South Africa are sitting on the shoulders of giants with regards to contribution to medical imaging. The Nobel laureate Alan Cormack co-invented the CT. He was South African. The first full-body X-ray was developed in South Africa in the early 2000s. And a company based right here in Cape Town has developed a revolutionary mammography device which will no doubt save countless lives through early detection of breast cancer. Now, these are marvelous, fantastic, proudly South African innovations, and we should be celebrating them. But as we continue to strive for more technological breakthroughs, what we mustn't forget is to think innovatively about how we can also increase demand. We have a transformational responsibility to change the landscape of healthcare. And I think the easiest way to go about that 
is to go for low-hanging fruit. I believe we can leverage what is already available and add value. And this value is not just for the clinician, but for the patient that the clinician serves. And in so doing, I believe we can begin to claim to be bridging the radiological divide. Thank you.